I'm Kayla Noel, and I'm the author of Coup. Coup is a fairy tale about a 10-year-old girl with a very unusual past. She's been raised since birth in secret on a city roof by a flock of pigeons. After the bird she loves most is injured by a hawk, she ventures down from the roof to seek help and discovers the human world is much more complicated and dangerous than she ever expected. I wrote Coup because I love weird, unexpected fairy tales, and I love finding a sense of subtle magic in the everyday. I'm going to read to you from the first chapter of Coup. Thanks for listening. Chapter 1. Roof. Every day for Coup and her flock began the same, even the day when everything changed. Coup woke when the sun rose, crawled from her nest of newspaper on the dovecote's floor into the brightness of the roof, and looked over her collection of plastic bags. She liked to put on a new outfit in the morning, something the pigeons didn't understand at all. Her hands brushed against a red bag she loved, and she sighed. Like many of the others, it was painfully small now. Instead, she stuck her feet into the hole she ripped into the bottom of a large yellow bag, shimmied her arms through the handles, and padded it out with some newspaper. Freshly dressed, she picked over the pigeon's morning haul of dumpster food for the least smashed donut and settled down to nibble her breakfast while she watched the train slide along their tracks in the ragged brown field below. Beyond, hazy in the distance, were trees and fences and a hodgepodge of big and small buildings packed together. She watched the tiny figures of other birds, ones she didn't know, glide in the sun between the jumbled rooftops. The air was cold and smelled clean like autumn. A frigid rain had fallen overnight. She wiggled her chilly toes and added more newspaper into her plastic bag booties. It was getting to be the time of year when it would take even more layers of padding to stay warm. Hoop and Ka had already started foraging for the newsprint she'd need and grabbing extra bags for her whenever they found them. Small piles were growing in the back of Ku's nest. The bags sorted carefully by color, but she'd need more of both to get through the winter. She wanted more newspapers for other reasons, too. For years, she'd liked looking at the pictures in them, but now Koo pored over them with an interest that felt like hunger, even though she had long ago learned you couldn't eat paper. She liked looking at pictures of faces, human faces. She collected her favorites and kept them far in the back of the dovecote, safe from the wind and the rain. From inside her romper, she pulled out the clump of papers Ka had dragged up for her that morning. Mostly the paper was covered with gray scratch marks, but there was a big black and white picture in the middle. Ku stuffed more donut in her mouth, then smoothed the paper out. A face, not a human, not a pigeon face, a human face. Eyes, nose, ears, the face was making a frown and Ku copied it, feeling her lips turn down. Human, she said and pointed to it. Seaver? Ku spoke the pigeon's language, the only language she knew. Burr perched on her knee, pecking at fallen crumbs. He was an old, slim bird the color of a roof when it was wet, with a bright white stripe across his wings. The stripe was beautiful, but also dangerous. It made him easy for hawks to spot. Not that Ku really worried about it. Hawks never hunted pigeons when she was nearby. Doing what, human? Ku asked. Burr didn't know. The pigeons never knew much about the pictures in the paper. Koo felt a pang. That feeling of hunger returned. It was not in her stomach. It came from somewhere else, somewhere much harder to understand. So that was part of the first chapter, and thank you so much for listening. I hope that you want to check out Koo. You can get it at your local independent bookstore or online or from your library. Thank you so much. Bye.